Welcome to section 3, home to the near nasties that the police just couldn't keep their hands off of. This episode I have something for you that captures the age of the video revolution, being as it is low budget, almost unheard of, and actually shot on video for video. Let's delve into the murky world of the Mancunian underground with the badass bouncer, with Cliff Twemlow's GBH. Nightclubs across Manchester are being raided by heavies working for the local crime boss Keller, and they're being extorted for protection. And when club owner Murray realises his club may be next, he calls for the services of an old ally. A man who's just about to be released from prison after helping him before. That man is Donovan, the legendary bouncer known as the Mancunian. As Donovan begins to work, he quickly comes face to face with the heavies sent to threaten the club. And so a battle begins for control of the nightclub scene, and a few old scores will be settled. GBH is a rather distinct film in several regards. It's one of the very few films on the list that really typifies the video revolution. The relatively cheap cost of recording and distributing on video meant that filmmaking suddenly became something that almost anyone could do, with a comparatively modest budget. Of course, at the time there was an explosion of shot on video productions. Many went nowhere, and even the most successful were, in the grand scheme, minor hits. Occasionally some true cult gems emerged and GPH was, in my opinion, one of the best. Hey, Donovan, you look great. Great. Really look fantastic. Really look the part, mate. <laughs> Perhaps we can keep the rabble out now, hey? <laughs> ah, very smart. Very smart. A little tire on the shoulders, maybe, but uh, I'll live with it. <laughs> hey, come on, I'll get you a drink. How about saying hello to an old friend, Donovan? Hey, Donovan, do you want that drink? It's a little early for painkillers, isn't it? Nah, it's a welcome home drink. Hey, remember me out here alone, Donovan. Don't get pissed up. Now, when I say the best, I don't mean in practical terms. The acting is very shaky for the most part. The editing, rather amateur. The general construction of the movie is done by people that are clearly not working with just a limited budget, but struggling with limited resources in experience and with the technology. So what is it that makes this at least an interesting film? Well, it starts with the utter enthusiasm that this seems to buzz with. This is one of those films that clearly comes from people who genuinely seem to want to make movies, and this enthusiasm is quite infectious. Now? Now! The main character Donovan is a well-meaning man. He's clearly a man of violence, but one of noble intent. There is a strange handling of the character in some respects that the film occasionally slips into near homoeroticism. I see you still got your stamina, Donovan. Yeah, just about. Do let me hold you back, youngin. Go ahead. Okay, Papa. See you tonight. Fuck. You cheeky little bastard. But Donovan is also clearly a ladies' man. This duality of character is certainly quite interesting. Donovan is clearly a macho man, slick with the ladies, but also a sensitive man with a close bond to his male comrades, even those who are his enemies. This is really a minor point, though. The character is a good man regardless of sexuality and his willingness to resort to violence. And this is the heart of the film, Donovan's integrity against the scum and thuggery of his enemy, Keller. It may be the case that the identification that can be made with a character like Donovan was something that the DPP felt was problematic. He's a character who is ambiguous in his methods and quite alluring as an anti-hero. Certainly he's not as clear-cut as most of the desirable heroes in terms of morality. To some extent, he's a misogynist. He's also not averse to being a thug, but his moral compass seems to be true, if somewhat roguish. In some respects, he's very much like the Wild West heroes, trapped in a violent society and forced to play the games of the lawless, though of course for the good guys. 
Indeed, the film itself seems directly inspired by westerns, with the nightclubs replacing the saloons and even there being a violent shootout that could have almost been lifted from any number of westerns. Well, Donovan, look up! <laughs> Get him, Donovan. I've blown his balls off, Rafferty. You know you're a stubborn Irishman. Must be having the drink now, then, huh? From one Mancunian to another. There are the heroes, the villains, the women who can potentially salvage the hero's soul, and of course the classic unspoken bond even between the enemies. There's even a Butch and Sundance style going out in a blaze of glory ending. The similarities are rather uncanny, though the violence in the film are probably more reminiscent of the spaghetti westerns than anything else. It does also cross over with the more notable crime dramas, but then both genres share common ground, choosing to humanise what would in normal society, whatever that may be, be recognised as being amoral or at least dubious. How well it would cross over to a foreign audience, however, is questionable. Most likely, it would be unsuccessful. This isn't because the characterisation is shoddy or the story unrecognisable, but the specifically British urban feel is something that even many British audiences would struggle to get over. And there's a hardcore of Twemlow's fans who very fondly embrace the specific regionalisation of not only this, but of Twemlow's other films as well. The overarching feel of this film is one of utter enthusiasm for the project, and the characters are played with what seems to be a great deal of gusto. It's often apparent that there's an awkwardness to the performances, and the lines and the action can not only be very cliché, but ham to a significant degree. But it all seems so very forgivable because despite all of this, it trundles along at a decent pace and doesn't waste much time trying to be anything pretentious. It's this honesty that really makes GBH what it is. While it's still a fantasy of the rough diamond good guys standing up to the injustice of the bad guys, it plays in an honest and sincere manner that frankly leaves many major movies in the dust, and I suspect this is in part what appeals to fans of this film. It's the heart that this film has rather than its technical accomplishment that rings through. And this shows through in the key characters, particularly in Donovan, who comes across as a true working class hero. When it comes down to it, GBH does actually seem to be a labour of love by all involved in making it, though it will always languish in obscurity because of its technical shortfalls, alongside its amateurish overtones, it may just be too much for many viewers to get over. Which is a shame, because what lies underneath is a rather fun story with a decent central character and a story that, if you can be charitable enough to forgive the multitude of rough edges, is actually quite engaging and fun. As the story goes, it's all a little done, maybe, but what with the Manchester background and the recognisable landscapes, this should actually be a rather endearing film to at least a British audience, at least those who appreciate Wild West crime drama types of films. Even for those who can't bring themselves to enjoy this film, the one thing that should be very apparent is this is actually a rather strong example of how the video revolution presented unparalleled opportunities to filmmakers. Where the final product may stand separate from the mainstream, it at least demonstrates that there were chances to make independent films on a nearly non-existent budget, for better or for worse. It's a small taste of a more level playing field in the film world, something that has been sadly lacking for the most part, and something that given new media opportunities, we're beginning to see resurge again, much to the angst of the major studios. As a way of a parting comment, it bears mentioning for the unwitting that this is not the GBH that you will generally find by googling. This is not the one that you are most likely to find, which will be Alan Bleasdale's drama, starring amongst others Michael Palin. If you can get to see Twemlow's rather rare title, by whichever means you can, then I suggest that it's actually a worthwhile watch. That you may either love for its charms, or even loathe for its aesthetic.
pride, Murray. There's no pride in empty pockets. And there's no pockets in this shroud. I'm paying you to get him here, Chris. Now, I don't care how you do it, but I want the Mancunian here tomorrow.